Grace, mercy, and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord, everybody. What a blessing it is to come together and to share tonight in our hour of power. I am excited about the Lord and what he's doing in each of our lives, and I pray you are too. I'm excited for all of you that are joining in tonight, and um, I'm certainly grateful for all of you. Um, God's been so good to us. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Let's pray together. Father, we come in the wonderful matchless name of Jesus to say thank you for another day. We thank you for your goodness and your kindness, your faithfulness and your love, and another opportunity that you've given us to share together. You are a great God. You are a great King in all the earth, and we worship and give you glory and praise. God, you have been so very good to us. We've come tonight to, to share together in your word. We pray for the presence of the Holy Spirit to lead, guide, and direct us in all that we say and do. God, we thank you because your word is indeed a lamp unto our feet. Your word is a light unto uh, our path. It is at the entrance of your word that light comes, awareness comes. We thank you, Lord God, for no matter the circumstances or what we even think or feel, it is your word that is working mightily in us. So we praise you, God, for what your word is accomplishing in and through our lives. And we give you glory and praise tonight for your word. Father, tonight, as we, we are continuing in our time of consecration together, Father, we lift up our prayer request today for praying for those that are lost. God, there are men and women, boys and girls who need to know you. God, we know the harvest is plentiful and the labors are yet few. So we pray to you, the Lord of the harvest, that you would send labors into the vineyard. God, that we'll be able to compel men and women, boys and girls, to come into the kingdom and experience the love that you have for them. God, I thank you now that you're still yet saving. Your blood still washes us white as snow. And so, Father, we thank you now that the scales are falling from their eyes and that they'll come to know you as their Lord and Savior. We thank you now for souls being birthed in the kingdom. Even now, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, bless God for all of you. Amen. Such a blessing to see so many of you joining us tonight. Listen, I thank God that I am in partnership and in fellowship with one of the greatest churches in the world, Kingdom Life Cathedral Ministries. Yes, right here in wild, wonderful, almost heaven, West Virginia. And I'm certainly grateful for you. I'm certainly grateful for all of you who are joining from far and near family and friends. I bless God for you. I thank the Lord for all of the King's Apostle Church International family and the Second Episcopal Diocese who's joining us tonight. I'm also grateful for the Kingdom Life Global Ship Global Fellowship family. My, my, my children, my heart, I am blessing God for you for joining us tonight and all of you who've come to share in the word of the Lord with us tonight. We're continuing our study in the book of Proverbs. And we are tonight um, conti um, continuing in the series, Wisdom for Living. Listen, we are so blessed today. I think we take it for granted. You see, we have the finished scriptures. We have the word of God. We have the scriptures, the holy scriptures, the sacred texts to help you and I understand who God is and what he desires of us. But in the days of the Old Testament, he taught his people by example. He wanted them to grasp three things. First, his holiness. Second, their sinfulness and the dis consequences of disobedience. And third, his care for them. He wanted them to know that he wanted that he wanted to be the source of every good thing. In every detail, God revealed his holiness and every sacrifice, the cost of sin. The rules of the tabernacle taught the people not to take worship lightly. It was serious and an awesome privilege to approach a holy and righteous God. God is our father. He is our father. 
and we have instant access to his very throne. Yet we should think about whether we're treating him with the reverence he deserves. I don't know about you. I'm in awe of how much God loves us and wants us to share in partnership in kingdom building. And the greater blessing is that we have access to his very presence. Now, you know, most of us have an aversion to holiness. We think it makes us weird. We think we'll stick out too much in the crowd. We would rather just blend in, you know, just be that nice Christian neighbor next door. But there's more wrong with that than many of us realize. You see, most of us just want to go through life without too many hassles. Anything that causes hassle, upheaval, will cause us to be pointed out to be different, and we want to avoid that. But to avoid this, we'll need to develop the skills of being a chameleon, just blending in. We'll blend in no matter the, the, the situation and we find ourselves in, we'll just become a part of the crowd. In doing this, we give up the very thing we need to confront and that is the brokenness in the world around us and the world that we're called to bring a difference in. Being a Christ follower, a believer in Jesus Christ, a follower of Jesus Christ, demands an absolute loyalty to Jesus Christ. Now, being loyal to Jesus Christ means we look to him and to him alone for the meaning and the purpose of our lives, for the direction of our days and the values and the truths that we ought to live by. All of that comes from Jesus and nobody else. Jesus gives us the power to live in the world as free people. We don't need anything from the world. Therefore, the world can't threaten us by withholding things from us. We have to be like Paul in whatever state that we find ourselves in. We are going to be content. There is a difference that you and I are called to be. When we begin to live our lives in a way of holiness and being in right standing before God, it is really where our witness begins. People will want to know why we live such a different life, why our lifestyles could be different. Why don't we do what everyone else do? Why don't we have the same goals and see the same pleasures as everyone else, seek the same pleasures as everyone else? It will then give us the opportunity to be the witness that God's calling for. Somebody said, Bishop, what does this have all to do with wisdom for living? It has everything. God wants you and I, and I'm going to use overseas, a comment to have the conversation with people. If you and I don't stick out, stand up for right, uh, be seen as different, then we won't have the opportunities to have the conversations. Blending in can cost us more than we know. Wisdom must be sought after with our entire being. We're living in a time where we really need wisdom. It is the wisdom of God that we must have in days like we're living in times where things are rapidly shifting and changing. We need the wisdom of God. We need the presence of the Holy Spirit to help us to discern and the wisdom to help us to make right decisions. Proverbs chapter 2, verses 3 through 5 in the New Living Translation. Proverbs chapter 2, verses 3 through 5 says this, cry out for insight and ask for understanding. Search for them as you would for silver. Seek them like hidden treasures. 
then you will understand what it means to fear the Lord and you will gain knowledge of God. Nothing of value is easily obtained. If it were, it would no longer be valuable. Inherent within the concept of value is the is is the feature of of, 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 of of sacredness. If all gravel were made of pure gold, then gold would not be valuable. The same is true with intangibles like wisdom. Wisdom in the King James Version, we often see she is an exceedingly valuable life commodity. And I'm going to talk about the, the femininity of wisdom in a moment. But wisdom, she's not easily to come by. If we want wisdom, we must incline our ears, listen, apply our hearts, cry out for her, lift our voices for her, and seek her, her as we would silver and search for her as hidden treasures. Then and only then will we understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. We must seek wisdom. It's interesting to know that the book of Proverbs, like the book of Revelation, has the running theme to it, the same running theme. It's often overlooked. It is the theme of two women a bride and a harlot. Wisdom is a choice that the wisdom of the bride or the seduction of the harlot. Wisdom is a choice, the wisdom of the bride or the seduction of the harlot. In Proverbs, it was, it was David's desire that his son uh, Solomon have wisdom. And now Solomon, we see here in Proverbs, um, chooses to pass on the wisdom to his son. He, 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 his, his desire is that, that his son would choose the right woman, Lady Wisdom, who will begin to share the guidance to live a right life. But the spiritual reader of Proverbs also sees another story here. We see how Solomon's son, David's son, Solomon, excuse me, would not fall for the beautiful seductress whose lips wet with honey and who flatters and even impudently kisses the inexperienced one. Speaking of her devotion to God, yet describing the sights and sounds and sensuality of her bed. Listen to what he said earlier. And we've studied this verses before, but let's look at it again. Proverbs 7, verse 13. So she caught him and kissed him. And with an impudent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me. This day have I paid my vows. Therefore, came I forth to meet thee, diligently to seek thy face, and I have found thee. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with carved works, with fine linen of Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with mirth, alloys, and cinnamon. Who is this mysterious woman? What a cognizant, cognitive dissonance. She uh, assures him she is saved and sanctified and right with God, then goes on to describe the potential pleasures of her bed. This woman is none less the false Christian church. She doesn't really love Jesus, but she pretends to. And she seduces many by her ways. She loves self and imagines that she can have it all. Jesus and the world. She is sensual, not spiritual, but is deceived into thinking that sensuality is spirituality. It is not. But Proverbs warns us 
that in the end, and look at verse seven of Proverbs, verse, um, uh, chapter seven, verse twenty-seven. Her house, this this seductive harlot, her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. This is why wisdom is important. This is why teaching is important. That we will be able to know the truth and recognize error. Remember, the book of Proverbs is all about wisdom. Wisdom is not about facts. Wisdom is about knowing what to do with what you know. Wisdom is knowing what to do with what you know. Wisdom is knowing when to do it. Wisdom is knowing how to do it. Proverbs uh, uh, are sayings. They, we've seen that they're, they're short and they give wisdom and insight to everyday living. The Proverbs are intended to help you and I to live a better life. They are not absolute promises. But they are guides to lead us in the right direction. They are general principles that if you and I do them, we will see our lives become better. Let's continue the lesson tonight. Um, Proverbs 24, verses 13 and 14. Let's look at that. Proverbs 24, verses 13 and 14. I'm sharing from the New King James Version of the Scripture. I'll probably pull in some others as we're going along. But our main text is found in the King James Version of the Scripture. Proverbs 24, verse 13. Do not withhold correction from a child. For if you beat him with a rod, he will not die. You shall beat him with a rod and deliver his soul from hell. Oh, what are you saying, Bishop? Well, a parent who neglects to correct their child doesn't love their child. A parent who is content to let the child's evil nature, which he is born with, grow until it consumes them, sends the child down a downward spiral. Wisdom understands that children are born and they're born in the sin. Those who love Jesus and their children should teach them about the nature of sin and how Christ wants to forgive and change them. Parenting done according to the scripture shows children the value of obeying God. It shows them how to walk in the fear of the Lord. Parents must be willing to deal with rebellion and stubbornness quickly. And discipline cannot be an afterthought. I know this isn't popular among our day, but this is why we're seeing such chaos in our world today. Children need to know their boundaries, why they are there, and that they will consistently be in force. Now, I'm not talking about being a, 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 a strong authoritarian parent or an abusive parent or a parent that is just overly strict, that doesn't model a biblical love and direction and guidance, give it. God is patient with us. We're his children. He's gracious. He's faithful to discipline us. And he's good to show us how to produce righteousness in our lives. The same should be true for parents raising children. You cannot be afraid to discipline your children. They get mad, they'll get over it. This does not stop their development. It aids them. You've got to guide them in the right direction. You are held accountable for it. Discipline shows us that we need Jesus to help us obey and, 
and that we do have a heavenly authority. It helps us learn to love him, to deny ourselves and to care about the needs of others. Discipline will not be fun for the child. And it is hard work sometimes for the parent. However, it is necessary. It is an eternal investment in their futures. There are ways to discipline your child, not abuse them, but correct them. Parents need to pay attention to your children's hearts, how to guide them, how to direct them. There's no spiritual magic to this on how to do it. Each child may be different. And you have to watch when you're correcting your child that you are in the right frame of mind, that anger is not being taken out on your child and you're not becoming abusive to them, but you're correcting and molding them for their good. I hope you hear me. It's very important. Many children today need correction, need guidance, and they need love and understanding. We need it. We desperately need it in our society. Lord, give parents wisdom and knowledge. Give them love, give them strength and give them the compassion and the intuitiveness they need to raise their children to love you and to serve you. We pray, Father, for them in Jesus' name, amen. Let's look at verse 15. Verses 15 and 16. Do not lie in wait, O wicked man, against the dwelling of the righteous. Do not blunder his resting place. For a righteous man may fall seven times and rise again, but the wicked shall fall by calamity. God looks after the righteous and he upholds them with his righteous right hand. It is not that they are never allowed to experience trouble or hardship or suffering, for they will. But by faith, they will continue to per persevere in love and in hope and in serving, no matter how many times they were opposed, persecuted, and insulted. No attack or plot of the wicked can make a believer in Jesus Christ stop loving Jesus, stop pressing on the upward way, stop believing and sharing the gospel and stop loving even those who do persecute them. The wicked have nothing to hold on to when they fall into trouble for God is, is not on their side. The wicked will pay for attacking the righteous. But the righteous have a heavenly dwelling to look forward to even if their earthly resting places are under attack. My brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of something. You are the righteousness of God and God is for you. Second Corinthians chapter five, verses 16 to 21 from the Passion Translation says this. So from now on, we refuse to evaluate people merely by their outward appearances. For that's how we once viewed the anointed one. But no longer do we see him with limited human insight. Now, if anyone is enfolded into Christ, if any man be in Christ, he has become an entirely new person. All that is related to the old order has vanished. Hallelujah. Behold, everything is fresh and new. And God has made all things new and reconciled us to himself and giving us the ministry of reconciling others to God. In other words, it was through the anointed one that God was shepherding the world, not even keeping records of their transgressions. And he has entrusted to us the ministry of opening the door of reconciliation to God. We are ambassadors of the anointed one who carry the message of Christ to the world as though God were tenderly pleading with them directly through, directly through our lips. 
So we tenderly plead with you on Christ's behalf. Turn back to God and be reconciled to him. For God made the only one who did not know sin, hallelujah, to become sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God through our union with him. Hallelujah. What a powerful, powerful verse. Powerful verses of scripture. I want to share with you before we even move on in our study of Proverbs, uh, um, something that we shared last week in the book discussion. You know, we had the book discussion with our friends, Pastor Joseph and Lakeisha Brown and the House of Healing Family, DMV. I um, mean, what a powerful time. And many of you were there. And preparing and meditating this morning, preparing my lesson, my notes, um, I, I was reminded of some things that I shared. And I felt like the Holy Spirit really impressed me to come back and share. We were in a book discussion, and I encourage you um, to get the book if you haven't got it and read it. If you're reading it, read it again because it is a blessing. Um, the book is called Unqualified by Stephen Furtick. How God uses broken people to do big things. Unqualified. How God uses broken people to do big things. I want to encourage you tonight. This is something that I shared with them on last week that blessed me from the book. Listen, what God does even through our weaknesses. As you and I as believers, we get weak. We are not perfect. But what God can do through us is bigger and better and bolder than we could ever imagine. Listen, God wants to do some bigger, better, bolder things through you. When we look at our shortcomings and mistakes, we tend to resign ourselves to where we are. I'll never succeed. We think my best efforts are too little and too late and there's no hope. But my brothers and sisters, God's ability and propensity to do the opposite of what we deserve can transform our lives. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse nine says, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. It's about being strong in and through and because of weaknesses. So we're weak. We don't, we're not perfect. But God takes those weaknesses and uses them for his glory. Listen, the current version of you is the right version of you for this moment. I just believe that. It means you can't, you can stop stressing, stop straining to try to be a different you because the real you is perfect and priceless. I quote the scripture often, you've heard it. He will perfect that which concerns me. He won't forsake the works of his own hand. The other scriptures I quote all the time, he who's begun a good work in you shall perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. You're at the right version for this moment. Somebody type that in the chat. Right version for the right moment. It's not only what God has to, you're, uh, uh, it's not only what God has to work with, it's what God wants to work with. God wants to work with you, the raw material. You may not be perfect, but God is working a work with you. Hallelujah. And, and, and he's not finished with you. He's perfecting that which concerns you. He's taking away those things that are pleasing to him and those things that are hindering you from being the greater you that he's desired you to be. You're at the right place with the right time. God's hand is still on you. You may still be on the potter's wheel. He's molding and shaping you after his life. This. Don't you give up. Don't you quit in this. Embrace what God is doing in this hour. You are the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He was made sin. Hallelujah. Him who knew no sin became sin that you would be the righteousness of God. You are the new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You're on an upward swing in life, a journey pressing forward and upward. 
to a greater new reality, a construct of a new reality you're in. You're going to be blessed to be holy, to be healthy, and to be healed in this season. Oh, I'm so excited for you. I'm so excited for me and this wonderful journey that we're on. God is doing some great things in our lives, and I pray that you get as excited as I am. Hallelujah. Sure, there are bumps on the road. Sure, there's some storms that come my way, but I realize if I keep my eyes looking to him, hallelujah, him who all, who's the altogether one, him who all of my help comes from, Jesus the Christ, the son of the living God, hallelujah, the greater one who lives on the inside of me, I'll make it. It is something to give God praise for. Hallelujah. I'm going to bring it down, but I felt like a preach coming on me now. Hallelujah. Because I'm excited about God. The enemy doesn't want you to get excited about what God is doing for you, where God has brought you from. God, he, he wants you to, 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 to continue to stress and to struggle and feel like everything is a fight. And it's just, you know, I'm just struggling. I'm doing my best to make it in. Oh, no, 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 no. You, you've got strength. You're, you're, you are more than a conqueror. You're moving ahead. You're pressing forward, onward and upward in him. You are. God is up to something great in your life. Woo. I'm going to bring it down now because I got real, real, real excited. Hallelujah. Because I get excited when I think about what God is doing for you, what he's doing for the people of God, what God has planned for your life. I just get all stirred up on the inside. Hallelujah. Let's see if I can get back to the lesson. Let me bring it down. Bring it down, Sterling. Hallelujah. Listen, how many of you are excited about what God's doing for you? How many of you believe that that, 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 that that you're pressing forward? Yeah, things are happening in our world. Rapid changes, challenges are there. But the greater one is on the inside of you. God is for you. He's more than the world against you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against you in judgment, he will condemn. And that becomes your heritage, the word of the Lord says. So you can understand how in everything you can give thanks for it is the will of God concerning you. Hallelujah. And knowing that all things will work together for the good of them that love God to them that are called according to his purpose. Hallelujah. You're, it's working for your good. Hallelujah. It's, he's working in you and he's working for you. Bless God. Let's go on to Proverbs. Amen. 24. Elder Wilson, help me out here before I get in trouble. Woo! Hallelujah. Bless God. I'm excited about Jesus and I'm excited about what God's doing for his people. And I pray that you catch on fire and get excited too. Don't allow the cares of this life to steal or kill your joy. Hallelujah. There is those things come to make us strong. Hallelujah. And the same God that brought me out of my yesterday's struggles and challenges and, 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 and crisis is the God that's going to bring me out today and the God that will see me through my tomorrow so right where i am i can lift up my hands and i can give god some glory and praise hallelujah if thing won't destroy me it's gonna make me hallelujah it's gonna make me to be stronger hallelujah i'm learning how to pray my way through it i'm learning to praise in the middle of the storm hallelujah victory may not be seen for me right now but i see it on the horizon and i'm moving into it well, glory to God. Let me go on now. Proverbs 24, verse 17. <laughs> glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Do not rejoice when your enemy falls. And do not let your heart be glad when he stumbles. Lest the Lord see it and it displease him. And he turns away his wrath from him. You know, people get a certain joy. They get excited when they see stuff happen to others. But that ought not be the testimony of the believer. We ought to care about others. Even people who may have done you wrong. We don't want to rejoice and it causes our heart to stumble. We don't want to see that. We're called to love. We're called to forgive. If there be any boasting that we have to do, we should be boasting in the Lord. We should be, be, be excited about God. 
and not be excited about the pain or the suffering of others, even if it's our enemies. Verse 19, verses 19 and 20. Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the wicked, for there will be no prospect for the evil man. The lamp of the wicked will be put out. This verse, in verses 19 and 20, pick up the theme from verse number one. Believers are not to get frustrated. We're told and admonished here to get frustrated when we see wicked people who are not yet being punished for their sin because they will be punished sooner or later. Justice will be served by Almighty God. And their eternal sentence, God will give. Believers must not even envy their passing prosperity because spiritual prosperity and eternal prosperity is what counts. Jesus will settle all accounts. Listen, don't be fretful of evildoers. Don't be envious of the workers of iniquity. Psalms 37 tells us. But they shall soon be cut off like the grass that withers. But delight yourself in the Lord. Take joy in the Lord. And he'll give you the desires of your heart. Amen. Verse 21. Proverbs 21 and 22. Uh, 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 Proverbs 24 verses 21 and 22. My son, fear the Lord and the king. Do not associate with those given to change, for their calamity will rise suddenly. And who knows the ruin those two can bring? It is never wise to stand in opposition to God, for God will bring ruin to the wicked. It's also generally not a good idea to try to act subversively toward a governing authority, given that it will likely even end with the rage being poured out upon those conspirators. These are the times when we must honor those that have rule over us and allow God to handle them, even when they're wrong. Amen. Let's go on to verse 23, 24, and 25. If you're getting something out of the study tonight, show me some thumbs up. Somebody give me some thumbs up. I'm, I'm checking to see if you're with me tonight. Amen. Glory to God. If you're getting something out of the study tonight, that's right. I see you. God bless you. Amen. Verses 23, 24, and 25 of Proverbs 24. These things also belong to the wise. It's not good to show partiality and judgment. He who says to the wicked, you are righteous, him the people will curse. Nations will abhor him. But those who rebuke the wicked will have delight and a good blessing will come upon them. Wisdom does not show partiality or pervert justice. Calling the wicked righteous or the righteous wicked. Those who care for justice hold such judgments and those who make them in spite and the people, if they have any sense, appreciate a system where evil doers are punished. We must not call wrong right and right wrong. We must stand for truth, stand for justice, not be impartial. If it's wrong, it's wrong. If the word teaches that I'm doing something wrong, I'm wrong. The word is right. We must remember these principles. Amen. Verse 26. He who kisses a right answer kiss the lips. What does that mean? A wise response that brings edification and encouragement is like a kiss of affection. There is also the possibility of a kiss 
that may not be right answer. It could be the kiss of Judas. We would do well to give the right answer according to God rather than kissing up to people to make them like us at the expense of the truth and justice. Give the truth. Tell the truth. Stand for the truth. Speak the truth. That's the important thing. Verse 27, let's go on. I could say some more. I'm going to go on. Verse 27, prepare your outside work. Make it fit for yourself in the field. And afterward, build your house. It is much more effective and efficient to prepare a building project and gather all the required materials so that they can be ready when needed. Otherwise, progress is slowed when more figuring has to be done and when more product has to be gathered. There is wisdom in planning and strategizing. But ultimately, even then, we still need the blessing and the provision of God on our work. It's nothing wrong to plan. You should plan. You should prepare yourself. What is God saying for you to do? What have you been thinking about? Maybe you need to take a notebook to prayer. I encourage you to do that. What are you praying about? What is God going to say to you? What's the plans that he's given you? Psalms 127 and 1 says this. Unless the Lord build the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. My brothers and sisters, we as believers should equip ourselves with the word of God. Equip ourselves. That's our building products. Those are the materials we use to construct our lives. when the opportunity comes for us to begin to build, we will be thoroughly prepared because we have the word of God. That's why you came tonight. You didn't just come to, to say, oh, I'm going to tune in because this is what I do every Wednesday night. No, I pray that you take this wisdom, that it finds a lodging in your heart, that the word of God begins to come alive in you more and more. That word begins to stir in you. It begins to challenge you in your thinking. It begins to deal with you in your emotions and your attitude. And you begin to understand the power of the word, the transforming work of the word of God when it's applied. And then wisdom begins to come. You begin to find yourself making right decisions. You find yourself not being fearful or fretting, but being bold in your living because you have an understanding of what God is saying to you. You'll be like Joshua and you're meditating in his word day and night and you'll make your way uh, uh, prosperous and you will have good success. It comes from knowing the word of God. It's the challenge to us all to be stirred and to know his word to as well as word to stir us, hallelujah, to allow his word to come alive in us the more. It's my prayer for Kingdom Life Cathedral Ministries, even doing this 21 days of consecration and all of you that are joining in and many people are seeking the Lord and, and calling upon him and presenting themselves to the Lord in this new year. Once the 21 days are over, what do we do next? Will we continue on in the things of the Lord? Will we continue to seek him and trust his word and run hard after him and allow his word to continue to stir us that we can be who he's called us to be? That we'll experience his power and his endless love. Amen. Let's look at the final scripture for tonight. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17 from the New Living Translation. It tells us all scripture 
is inspired by God. Second Timothy chapter three, verse 16. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. That's what the word will do. It will show you what's right and will show you what was wrong. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. Look at verse 17 of chapter three of 2 Timothy. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. The word of God is equipping you for every good work. You are equipped for every good work. I want to go back to something I shared with you, and I have to share it again. You know what that means, being equipped for every good work? It means that you understand that you are the right version for the moment. Amen. When you are allowing the word to work on you and to perfect you and to cause you to be all that God has called you to be, you are now walking and experiencing what God has for you. And he has great and mighty things in store for you. I'm so excited about what the Lord has in store for you. Listen, I want to pray tonight. I'm ending the study a little early because I want to spend a few moments praying for you and touching and agreeing with you, wanting you to know that God has some great things in store for you. Hallelujah. I'm blessing God for what his word is doing in your life. How his word is perfecting that which concerns you. How his word is doing some great and mighty things in your life. God's up to something big and it's happening right now. Yeah, yeah. Listen, you have survived two years of a pandemic. He said, Bishop, you just don't know what this thing did to me. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I don't think it did anything to you. I think it gave you an opportunity to grow and to be all that God's called you to be. I want to pray. I want to pray as we're praying for our things and I have to pray for the lost, but I'm also going to pray for you because I just feel led to do that tonight. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this moment in time that you've given us to come together. We thank you for your word working mightily into us tonight. We thank you because of your word, we are equipped for every good work. We thank you, oh God, that your word corrects us. It, it, it shows us the right way to go. It sets boundaries for us. We find healing and we find deliverance. We find the materials for the construct of a new reality that we find in you based on your word. Hallelujah. We know heaven and earth will pass away, but your word shall live forever. So, Father, we thank you for your word now. I pray for my brothers and sisters tonight that your word is working mightily in them. Your word right now is building them up and causing them to grow in the grace and the knowledge of you. And they're falling in love more with you as they come to know you through the power of your word. Lord, tonight we pray for, for the loss. Lord, men and women, boys and girls are in need of you. So much is happening in our world. So many things are happening, breaking down systems, ideologies, principles are, are falling. They're, 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 they're being deconstructed. And Father, help us as the church to raise up the bloodstained banner. That, that Help us to, to lift up the banner. Uh, help us to bring people to the banquet table and offer them love. That they will find that if they call upon your name, that they'll find life and life everlasting. Father, help us to be bold witnesses. Fill us with your spirit. Baptize us again in your spirit, Lord, that we would be the bold witnesses that will declare your word and that sign will follow us because we believe we will lay hands on the sick and they shall be healed. We will raise the dead and we will boldly declare that you are Lord to the glory of God the Father. We thank you and we give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, amen.
Now, listen, don't go anywhere. Stay with me. We're all going to leave in a few moments. Amen. I want you to, to share with some of exciting things that are coming up. Now, in preparation for next week, we want you to finish reading chapter 24 and 25. Amen. Proverbs 24 and 25. It's good to familiarize yourself uh, as we're going through the, the verses. Um, you can even gain more access from what God is sharing with us. Amen. Now, I want to encourage you to join me tomorrow as the culture of prayer is rising in Kingdom Life Cathedral Ministries. I will be on the prayer line tomorrow at 6 a.m. Remember, we're praying every Tuesday and every Thursday morning at 6 a.m. And in my goodness, Tuesday noonday prayer is growing. Every week I see a few more joining in. I'm getting excited about that. Don't forget to join us in our time of noonday prayer on Tuesdays. Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6 a.m. and then Tuesdays at 12 noon. Listen, coming up soon, and in, 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 I believe in the month of March, will be the Storm the Gate prayer session. You don't want to miss that. Our first one of 2022. So it's coming up as the culture of prayer is rising. I, I, and then I want to encourage you, don't miss Sunday. Don't miss Sunday at 9 a.m. as we come together for a special time. Sunday is Super Sunday. Wow. Super Sunday, February 6th uh, at 9 a.m. Whether it's uh, you join us virtually here on Facebook Live or in person, we're dressed in casual. We're going to wear a jersey to represent our favorite football team, and we're going to have a great time and worship it is communion sunday so prepare your elements for those of you that are going to be worshiping um virtually as we celebrate and honor god listen we're continuing our second message in the series the construct of a new reality i'm excited about the word sunday listen i am so excited i can't wait to preach it and share it with you hallelujah and believe in god to do great things in our lives as we journey together listen Sunday also ends our consecration. This is day, I believe, 15 or 16. We're almost at the end. We only have a few more days. And then we'll be, uh, have made the journey. And I bless God for so many Kingdom Life Cathedral Ministry citizens and families and others who have joined along the journey with us. God is doing some great things in our lives, and I want you to be encouraged and strengthened. Now, I also want to encourage you about the following Sunday, February 13th, is Scholarship Sunday. As we we're, we're encouraging everyone to, to bring your seed to share with us as we celebrate and honor our our esteemed beloved leader, our late leader, um, Bishop uh, E. Eugene Baltimore um, in our scholarship fund. The scholarship has, uh, fund has been a blessing to dozens of young people. And we're looking to bless them again in a scholarship in the honor of this great man. And Sunday will receive a special offering. Thank God for many of you who've already sown your seed. You've already given. Bless God. And we want to make this a banner year for our scholarship as we prepare to bless our high school seniors as they're going off to college to continue their journey of living. Amen. I also want to remind you of something that's coming up. Write it down so you can be present. Our in-house conference, you'll be hearing more about that, is going to be on February 19th, our in-house conference at 10 a.m. And for our leaders and the entire family of, of Kingdom Life of Future Ministry to join us at 11. It's going to be um, virtual and in person, but you don't want to miss it. Some exciting things are going to be shared as you as we've come together and continue our journey of kingdom building and kingdom ministry here based in the Eastern Pandan handle with our arms and hands reaching around the world. Listen, I bless God for your faithfulness in giving. God loves a cheerful giver. And, and, and long as the earth remains, there's seed time and harvest. And I, I, I know one thing, when you sow into good ground, it yields a good harvest. This is ministry's good ground. There are several ways that you can give and um, tonight, and I encourage you to do so. You can, on Sundays between 10 and 12 p.m., drop it off at our Charlestown location, our main location, 551 Willow Spring Drive in Charlestown, West Virginia. You can mail to KLCM, P.O. Box 967, Ranson, West Virginia, 25438. Again, that is KLCM. P.O. Box 967, Ranson, West Virginia, 25438. 
or you can text to give. You can send a text to the number 304-398-6627. Enter the desired amount and put your hashtag and you can give there. You can also give um, through kingdomlifecathedral.org slash give, and it'll take you right to our giving app. And then you can also go to the Vanco mobile app and share your giving. We bless God for you. If you're making checks, you can make them payable to Kingdom Life Cathedral Ministry or KLCM. Listen, God's up to something. You can also tonight give right using the app. Right there on the screen, there is a place where it says use app. If you press that button, it will lead you right to the place of giving. Our Elder Wilson is showing you there, and it'll take you right to our giving app where you can give and sow your seed. What a blessing it is that God has given us the opportunity to sow and to give an offering. Listen, I want you to understand that God is for you and God is with you. Amen. And he's a, he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So I want you to know I'm praying for you. And remember, it's your moment in time. Live the kingdom life. Blessings and love. And have a wonderful evening. Power, power.